Hi, it's been a little while. Uh, I'm fitting a machine DRO to my Myford ML7 tri-lever with a gearbox on. Uh, this is a completely unsponsored, nothing to do with the uh, Allen Dale Group or MDRO at all. This is just me fitting a DRO to my lathe. Let's get started. So taking a quick look at everything, I've not touched any bags or anything, I'm assuming and hoping and praying that everything is here uh, because as I say, I bought this back in uh, late 2019, 20, early 2020 time. Uh, I think it fits, uh, I'm of course on a different lathe since, uh, since back then, but everything is beautifully marked up with stickers with proper name plates on here and I'll be honest, it looks a little bit daunting. Now. Uh, I have, of course, invested in the past in Chinese uh, kind of iffy, diffy stuff, and this is, to me, a proper kit that is seems to be assembled in the UK. Again, not sponsored. But this is proper drawings. This is not, you know, dodgy translations. This looks pretty good. I'm pretty impressed so far. Now it doesn't say which, which way, so I'm going to guess that way. You need a 3 16th Whitworth spanner here. Not quite sure why these aren't, why these aren't locking nuts. You get the idea. Right, now you've got another bracket. You basically do exactly the same again with your uh, 1 8 across flat Allen key and your 3 16 Whitworth uh, spanner. Right, we've uh, we've bolted though. We've done this step. Now we're moving on to this step. And uh, again, I, I don't say this is going to be a guide, but my bags look like that, which is that number there, and that number there. And then by the looks of it, the next bag you're going to need is this one here, and you're going to need the uh, cap heads and these to then bolt onto the uh, onto the bed just here. So I think those to me look like a 3 16th Allen key head that you're going to need. So the next step, we're going to put these tabs on here by the looks of it. And there's not a lot of thread on here, so don't be a gorilla and uh, over tighten these. Don't go nuts. Uh, there isn't a torque setting on here. Uh, so, you know, get steady. Right, next step, we need this, which looks something like this. So that's where you want to, uh, want to grab. There's like a magnetic strip you want to be really, really careful of. Uh, and it's the long bar that goes across here. Now, looking at the instructions, this to me looks like the thicker bit of the extrusion goes towards the top. Now, I don't know how yours are packaged, but when you're taking this out, there's a little sneaky bag that's at the back. So just be mindful, don't chuck all this stuff away. Um, I spent a few minutes trying to find this at the back of the uh, back of the parcel there. Just keep that in mind.
Right, here seems the scary bit. I've gone back inside and I've uh, I've washed my hands. Now, by the looks of it, that just goes right into the back. So you want to make sure that that is definitely in set. So we're going to peel the backing off, and then we're going to put that in there, and then it's got a little uh, a little cover on the sides. And I'm going to avoid touching it as much as possible. <laughs> Right, then we've got this really thin stainless steel slide that goes in there. And that is quite thin to protect it. There we go, that's in. Right, so the next bit, we're now up to this bit, step 11, secure the stainless steel strip with a rubber gasket, which is this on here. So this little gasket strip here apparently needs to be stretched a little bit. Now all I'm using is a lollipop stick because I think that's going to be the best option. It does say stretch it in a little bit and I don't know whether I should have done the top one first but I don't know. But a lollipop stick is just the job. There we go, just like that. And this stainless bit moved a bit. Just like that. Oh, that's annoying. There we go. So as you can see we've got the top strip and the bottom strip in there and we just guide a lollipop stick, or I did, through the top there. Right so we've now got that in place, we're now on step 12 and this bit doesn't really make sense to me as the bag is a DRO BR514, however these to me look like the, uh, the T-nuts and these are now uh, in metric, so we're gonna need a four mil Allen key to put the T-nuts onto your cross slide. Right, so we're counting as we go, and of course we've got four of each of the T-nuts and the uh, metric M5 uh, by 16 cap head bolts and washers. Now you wanna make sure these are going the right way up, and to me it looks like uh, that's the way we go. Just like so. Uh, and have these nice and loose because these are a right pain. If anything like my 3D printer. There you go. Now this is very fiddly is this. It doesn't help when you've got sausage fingers. Like me. Alright, so we are now on step 12, uh, part B if you want to call it, but uh, what we're looking for is the DROBR slash 510 and this is the puppy that we're after. And we want this bit here, the flat bit, pointing towards the lathe by the looks of it. Right, you have to loosen these back off, push them up with your fingers, just there. Oh. I've just noticed that these T-nuts are different sizes, uh, different lengths. I don't know if that's just just China or what. We will press on regardless. So I'm just working my way through these and it's like some of the, these feel very, very, very tight. Um, I'm a little bit, oh, I'm, I'm not liking how tight that is. I don't think I'm doing anything wrong here. So this is going to be quite hard to make out on camera, but I've in the in the bag, I think <laughs> someone somewhere in a factory somewhere has given me a very, very slightly different profile, which is this one here. Um, I, I haven't got one of these. I've just checked my 3D printer and they're completely different. 
Uh, but that doesn't fit, but these ones do. In my opinion, how they should. Whereas this one is just far too tight. It will go, but it's... Yeah, oh, really tight. I, I don't really want to force that. Which is a little bit annoying. So I'm going to have to either get in touch with them and buy one. Because I don't think I'm in warranty anymore. Um, so yeah, I, I, I guess I've just got three then, by the looks of it. So what I'll do is I'll put the funky weird one to one side and I'll get another one ordered and I can hopefully just slide that in there um, but yours should look a, something a little bit like that be interesting if anyone else had that issue we'll see so what we're going to do is measure uh, to make sure that this is equally spaced from the saddle either side as per the instructions and that will have um, completed step 13 now one thing I'm noticing here is that this is of course a, um, a push fit oiler uh, on the side here, a, a push oiler and now I can't really gain access to that so uh, maybe now and again I'll have to take this off to, to gain access to that. So it's not a huge job um, and the, you know they're making uh, some very modern tech on a very old bit of, uh, bit of equipment here so there's always going to be some sacrifices I guess, something to bear in mind. So I'm working along here and I'm now on step 15. Locate the magnetic reading head and fit to the bracket DRobr 20 supplied uh, in kit BR500 using the M4. Now, I see that that is going to be one of these, which, uh, okay, I get that DROMG. Now, it just, there isn't, I, I've had to walk away from this uh, a few times, not because I'm getting frustrated, but just to kind of keep my head cool. But I've got the magnetic strip, DRO BR 500, and none of these are on here, um, unless I'm missing a cable. Uh, but they're, they're just not, to me, that number isn't one of these. BR500, which I've got, and I've got counter, I've got two countersink bolts there. Okay. Okay, so it could be either one of these. BR, see that BR016 number I've got. But that isn't B, does not make sense to me. It's like we're missing a page. I, I, I get why the, well, hmm. So I've got two of these bags here, both have the little plug on, obviously one's for the uh, cross slide and one's for the saddle. Uh, and both have got the same number on here, and I don't really want to open both of them up and then try and figure that out. But I, I'm just not, I don't, I don't want to open, I could figure it out, don't get me wrong, but slide into the support extrusion, the BR059. There isn't a BR059 in here. Uh, sorry, the uh, BR016. That's a BR500. There's not a BR016. BR500. Locate, well, there's two. I've also gone back to the technical descriptions of, of this and that MG number, that's MGEH05, MGEH05 isn't in here. So I'm guessing they're the same, but that's a bit pants. Maybe I'm overthinking it. I do do that. All right, give it a go. Just so I don't get them mixed up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of a green sharpie line on here and then the bag that I've just gotten this one out of, I'm going to put a green sharpie line on there. You never know, it might make life a bit easier. Green and green. Right, let's just whack these together. 
It's a good job that these instructions are colour printed, that's what I would say. So the arrow that's pointing this way, when you're first installing this, you then flip the unit upside down, and then you really have, just ignore this for me, this is how I'm doing it, you've kind of got to ignore this a little bit and just kind of copy the picture. Um, personally, I, I think whoever took the photos, it's, it's like anything, just slightly tipping it up, you know, would you'd know a bit more of the location of the um, of the nut and bolts here. Uh, that would have been really, really handy. But in essence, you want it to look, so you've got an overhang, your arrow's pointing that way, and I've gone with the bolts at the back. I don't know if that's correct or not. I'm not 100% I'm not sure. Um, but again, we want to have these finger, finger tight for now. So we're still on step 16, which in my opinion, we should now be on 17. Uh, because it jumps from 16 to 18, so we're, that's a bit odd, 16 to then 18, so we're on kind of 17, that's not 17, and you should have had a bag of bits left over uh, from your, uh, from when you bolted this onto the cross slide, and of course checking it and keeping everything clean, so this random bag, bag of bits is no longer random, we now need it and we need the DRO BR019 bracket. Uh, again, if this bracket could have been zoomed out slightly, it's like, okay, is it that way, is it that way? You spend more time kind of figuring it out yourself than you do looking at the pictures in a way. But we're getting there, we're, we're, we're staying positive. And as we're going along, we're, we're keeping sure that we're keeping nice and tidy and it's worth getting a little pot that you can put your bits of uh, bits of nuts and bolts and tea nuts in and, uh, and keep ploughing through. Now looking at this plate here, we've got some slots and we want the holes that are closest to the slots. So we're going to orientate this up this way, slide in the tea nuts here and then uh, uh, lightly tighten these up and centralise the bracket. And again, you just want to be really careful because in this bag of bits that you've just opened, uh, we seem to have two lengths, so one's 20 mil and one's 16. And these are really fiddly and awkward to me. I'm hoping to God that these fit okay. There we go, just like so. Centralize that somewhere around there. We'll get the calipers on there. Finger then tighten these up. And it should look something like that. Right, I am very awkwardly crouching here, but what you then want to do is put this plate and then you'll see those holes there. It's really hard to do this through a camera lens. Like so, grab your other one. Again, it's really handy or good practice to get, you know, your washers on your bolt ready to go. Just like so, and then I think we're going to push that in, but I'm going to leave that there for now and then look at the instructions again. Right, so now we are on uh, step 19, and what we're, what we're doing is just positioning this uh, within, the, uh, within the rail with that uh, bit of stainless and the O-ring seal that we've put in there previous. Now, what it's asking you to do is uh, have a spacer. Uh, I thought I'd be a clever dick and get the feeler gauges out, but there's just no kind of ability to really kind of get in there reliably and accurately. So what I've done is I've uh, I've found a business card of some uh, dickhead salesman, uh, which is about 0.35 of a mil, which is uh, which is within the tolerance that's given between 0.25 and uh, half a millimeter. So I'm going to use these either side, and then I'm going to pull them out after everything's been tightened up, and then just double check them. Um, so basically using those as a feeler gauge. So as you can see here, we've got. Uh, you can't see this side, but there is a business card either side of here. Now, you don't want to overlap them like I've just done, so double check that they're on there. Nice and free and easy, as she does it. And then you want an 8mm spanner, which is annoying that they've gone from bloody spanner sizes to then... I would have preferred an Allen key, I think. And then you're just going to keep that tight and then make sure your business card or whatever that you've used 
is in there. I'm going to have to do this with the camera off, but you get the idea. Right, so we've tightened up the uh, eight mil uh, bolt underneath and we're removing our business cards. There we go. Who uses business cards anymore, eh? So we take them out and now that should be pretty solid. And of course, these have all got to be tightened up. They, they should already be tight, but these are um, nice and tight. So uh, I'm going to double check it. Uh, I'm going to go up and down the length of the bed uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the apron and just make sure everything's okay. So we're just going to check either that side there. Yeah, that feels nice. Yeah, you can't really argue with that. That's that's within their tolerance there. thought it was a bit fiddly before you're now going to need a two mil allen key and you're going to pick up the little m3 by eight millimeter button head bolts Okay, so that in theory is done now. Uh, I just, I, I think what's always good is to just go around, make sure that everything's nice and tight, including, including these. I don't want to move anything. So, you know, it's just, I just want to, you know, make sure that everything's still in alignment here. Uh, but there we go. And everything feels like she should. Okay, so this part of the video uh, is now going to be fitting the cross slides. Now I've got an ML7 slide, which is uh, here. Uh, so this is the part of the instructions where we are. So we're now on page 12 of 20. Now I have got a few little bits and bobs left. These are the M3 bolts, probably because they're expected to drop them. And we've still got some pan heads uh, as well. So I don't know if these are, sp are spares or what, but um, we've still got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, including the cable, uh, eight things in your box still to go. And uh, we're making sure that we're not binning any of the, uh, any of the bags just in case we've, we've, uh, we've lost something. Right, let's go make a brew and carry on with the cross slide. Right, on to the next bit, step one, ensure the magnet is blah, 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 blah. So this profile here, you've got to make sure that this strip is, uh, is on the top. You've got a, uh, your stainless protector, and then you've got this uh, magnetic strip here. Now, go and wash your hands, uh, degrease them, all that good stuff. Now it should look something like that. So you've got your stainless steel cap on the top and then you've got that magnetic strip underneath your, your stainless strip like so. Right, we're now on step two. Uh, so tail stock side of uh, insert an M6 T-nut supply with the DRO. So the bag that you had these random T-nuts in, this is what we're now going to use over to the, uh, over to the cross slide. So we've just attached this onto here with the magnetic strip, the stainless strip, uh, just under this bit here. Like so. Right, step five, we've now got the remaining uh, M5 cap head with this snazzy looking bracket here. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a, there's a bloody big burr on there and it's stopping it from going in. No big deal, I'm just going to 
take that off and that should go in okay there just like so again it's worth mentioning that you know machine DRO don't make tea nuts so you know we can't blame them for everything can we so I've just gone over again and I've got it a little bit better it would be nice if they came with some spares because I, I still need another one for that bit we did earlier but we'll keep going we'll keep going all righty we're now on step six <laughs> which I'm hoping this is the right one nothing else in there and we need uh, DRO BR508 which is this bag here which is good and we want arrow pointing down and counter sinks up so you want arrow down and the hockey stick oh both counter sink okay so you want arrow down or oh, uh, Oh yeah, arrow that way <laughs> can only go one way by the looks of it. So you want arrow that way with the hockey stick that way. And there's just a there's a little bit of a burr in there, so I'm just going to blast that out. Right, I have made a slight cock up, which was we're now uh, onto the step of fitting this on. So we're on kind of step seven. Um, but these are M5 by 12 mil and the button heads are for the top slide, uh, cross slide and the cap heads are for the actual DRO um, assembly here. So sorry about that. I did tell you wrong. That's the first mistake we've made on this one. OK onto here so this is the bracket here and we are wanting the cable in this orientation so your arrow is pointing towards your top slide right I've taken uh, I've taken this uh, tightened up it's now the business card thickness again so we're just gonna double check that's okay we can get that through all the way there I'm, I'm gonna push it back that way that's 0.35 mil that's center within the tolerance there Right, so that's kind of it. Um, this this feels pretty good. Uh, this feels as it did. Now we have got to play around with the with the cable uh, and make sure that's absolutely cock on. Uh, and then that's kind of it of, of those instructions. So I think now we've just got to figure out what we're doing with the with the arm and the console and everything else and get the box out because that's <laughs> that, that, that's all she wrote on here. But never mind. So maybe I've left quite a, a bit too much on here. Uh, I'm just going to trim off these uh, these uh, little cables here. That's going to give me a nice little bit of tension. But there's a nice big P here, so coolant and things and dirt can't uh, can't go anywhere. Uh, and it's you know I think it's about where it should. Right, on to the next bit. And again, there's no lying on this channel. Uh, these are the bits that I've got left over. That's the only bit that I'm not too thrilled with. Maybe I could file it down a little bit and um, I think I'll make that work. I, I can still fit that. Uh, I've also got some of these pan heads still and I've got some of the uh, M3 and I've, I've got tie wraps, but we know about those. Uh, and it looks like more M3 screws, uh, flathead screws there, which look evil to me. Uh, and I've got a sticker to, to put on, uh, and that's about it. Here's some instructions uh, for the basic functions. I'm, I'm not going to teach you how to use a digital readout in this video. Uh, I've still got the arm that I need to fit on, but I'm going to do something a little bit different probably to everybody else. has been in storage this but uh, I think I'll, I'll probably change that to a stainless dome head or something prettier and that can go on the wall that's a nice finished part why is that one not dome head as well that's a bit odd to me but never mind box of bits for this I'm going to keep everything separate
Right, so I want my kit to be mounted onto the wall just because it's going to be the best out of the way, strongest option. So uh, the kit doesn't seem to come with any raw plugs, but typically these kits, the, the raw plugs are always a bit rubbish. So I'm using these uh, six by 60 coach screws that are going to uh, screw into the wall. It looks a bit more engineery. So uh, I'm, I'm going to use these uh, and I think they're, they're very, very strong those. Uh, there's two holes either side, I've just marked it up where I want it. Again, this isn't me showing you how to do DIY, you get the idea. Okay, uh, and here is the digital readout. Uh, everything works as it should. It's super duper weirdly accurate. So um, I'm not going to get into, this video has gone on way too long. I hope it's helped some of you. I'm not going to get into um, how to use it and everything else. Just to be honest, I'm, I'm not the right guy for that. It's been a good number of years since I've had a such a nice DRO and not a more basic vintagey one. So um, I'm going to watch some Blondie Hack videos and um, uh, and some other uh, other well-known YouTubers uh, to get me up to speed on it. But um, uh, the kit itself was was great quality. The T nuts, yeah, um, you know, maybe need a little bit of fettling. Um, you need to do two drill two holes, which I thought was a little bit, you know. But all in all, um, you know, these lathes are worth more than they ever have been. And I know this is quite an investment onto this lathe, but I've had it an ML7 now for 12 years. Um, it fits the type of work that I do. Um, I don't buy machines to try and make money on them. So I think it's worth the investment for me and my machine. I'm not saying it's the right way and it's not, I'm not saying it's the it's where you should do it, but this is the way that, that, that I'm doing it. Uh, and all in all, uh, I, I feel like it's, it's, it's going to come in massively, massively handy uh, for my upcoming steam engine builds that, uh, you know, my little, my little model engines that I'm making at the moment. So, um, yeah, really pleased, not sponsored, nothing to do with that. Um, of course, I'm going to say it's great because it's the reason why I've got into it. Um, but I did do a lot of research at the time, what was the best. And I think the beauty of this is, of course, it's a UK based company. Uh, that, that assembles all the units here. It's a well-known brand and, and of course it puts a bit of money onto your machine. So it's now worth a little bit more uh, and it's the ML7 that, uh, that, that I've wanted and envisioned for uh, quite some time. So uh, yeah, really pleased. I'll probably do a, a, another update video a little bit um, down the line. I think I want to definitely put some sort of um, scale onto the tailstock. Uh, top slide, not really needed, it would be nice, but um, I think there is a port at the back of this that you can put a Z-axis um, onto this if you really wanted to. Um, but aside from that, I, I, I don't know. We're, we're gonna see how we go. Um, it's early doors, so far, pretty pleased. Uh, is it accurate and all that good stuff? I, I don't know quite just yet. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a play, I'm gonna finish the video, and I'm gonna thank you everybody for all your lovely messages and uh, checking in on me uh, from time to time. We'll see you again soon. Thank you.